to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Whoa, Jabe. Hi. I'm going back and forth here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's still moving. Still moving. It is the weirdest feeling. You're a seaman now. I have sea legs. Yeah. You're a sea person. Mm-hmm. You're you're a person of the sea, is what you are now. Woman Jabe. of the sea. Yeah. Uh, real Been life there. mermaid. You did Been it. Been there, done that, conquered. You did it. Conquered um, it was sick the whole time. We are back from the cruise. How Drinking Bros cruise. Fun was that. Yeah, uh, it was amazing. Um man, couldn't be with a better group of people. Uh, it was perfect. Yes. It, it was amazing. The only thing like was that it was really choppy on the last day. Really choppy. So literally you and I have been moving back and forth all day long cuz we really flew in and just immediately did a show. Like we're yeah. just yeah. Going live on air and just doing a show. Yeah. Um, because we try to not leave the people hanging. No. With shows, Did even while shows we're on the road. On the boat, met some amazing people. Like, I think people were surprised that we were hanging out with them the whole time. Is the most that I, the, the most comments I got were like, oh, you guys are like really hanging out. We had dinner yeah. with them every night, yeah, drank yeah. with them. Like, um, and everyone was super cool. It was like really cool. I don't know. It was really fun. The really great experience, man. I, I can't uh, thank any everybody enough for coming out to the cruise because it was it was incredible. And again, I mean, you know, they sit you at tables at night for like these kind of fancy formal dinners or whatever. And like, yeah, we just invited people over, you know, listeners who we've uh, maybe met or rode into the show or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, here, why don't you have dinner with us? What's your life story? Um, and it was pretty rad. You had all of the things, by the way. What? I've never seen that many seasickness toys. Is toys the right word? Nope. It's um, just uh, remedies. Ah. I tried everything. I sacrificed a uh, <laughs> small watermelon. That was part of it, too, to the sea. I had to throw it out to the sea, and that apparently the sea gods will not make you not have seasickness yeah. i had three c bands each side oh yeah 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 um things behind your ears uh dramamines all different types of dramamines from natural to non-drowsy daily yep yeah and took them all took everything you had uh, about 19 bracelets up and down your arms like you were Deion yeah. sanders in 1995 but i really think it was the only way that i could hang out because I really was, like, I think Danthony even was like, so how was your sea sickness? I was like, I was sick the uh-huh. entire time. So yeah, being able, like, I had to take all the things. If I drank at night, it helped. Uh huh. So, like, once I started drinking at dinner, I was good. But it's the daytime, just trying to, like, get through it. And um, that's how much everyone meant to me. So I'm that gonna, I braved I, it. I'm going to give you some some credit here, some mad props, right? Because as, as much fun as I make of you and the seasickness sure. and all that shit, and I'm like, dude, I don't get it. I don't get seasickness or whatever. And, and cruises aren't supposed to move that much, right? Um, but that last day when when we were going back, and I guess there was a a tropical storm kind of filtering out through the waves. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It wasn't, you know raining or anything like that but uh it made the waves a little bigger i guess than they normally are and i was like you were definitely not supposed to feel it moving like this so i hear i i was even sweating where i was like oh shit every single person in our group felt a little sick at that point was like uh, i'm and i'm still moving right now today so like that is not just you that is me as well um, it's such a weird feeling. Typically, dude. that that is not the case. This is this is the case. You feel like this if you go out um, like deep deep sea fishing, right? Yeah. For the day, and it's usually like this for the next twenty four hours. Um, but you're in a smaller boat, and yes, you can feel the waves. Right. In a large cruise ship, you should not be able to, unless it is pretty choppy. Pretty choppy. So that that one is not on you. That was I'm going through that as well right now today. 
And uh, yeah, that's sea real. Sea legs. We got our sea legs. Sea legs, brother. Sea legs, brother. But it was so fun. Uh, and anybody watching the video show who's subscribing on YouTubes, you'll notice my hair's a little different. Got cut. Summer Swayze's over. Mm. It's over, Japes. Mm. How happy are you about this? Thank God. I'm just sort of waiting for the next uh, thing. I Because we've gotten a lot of suggestions nope. on what your next no. No, thing no, no, is no. supposed to be. The Seagal is a no-go. Summer of Seagal is a no-go. No, and, we, and the reason why it was suggested is I said we would cut it off. We would have an audience member cut it off live on stage on the cruise, which we did. Mm -hmm. And I had it. I mean, it was a two-handed ponytail back there. Oh, yeah. It was big. Oh, yeah. So everybody was like, Jesus, man, you look like Seagal, you know? And I'm when like- When you had it in the ponytail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I was and like, you also had, we went to Mexico and got the classic like shirt- Triple X. With the- Bodies on them. Yeah, painted bodies on them. Yeah. With the good bodies on the shirt. Yeah. Which yeah. I thought was hilarious. You know I love an ironic tourist buy. Yeah. Uh, air, my NOLA shirt, NOLA hat. I should have worn that with this. I'm just going to at one point wear all of my tour, ironic tourist stuff yeah, at once. Yeah, your trinkets all at once. My trinkets at once. Um, I think, I think it would be nice. I think it would be a nice thing. Nice. But no, I did I'm... see a Selleck. A summer oh, yeah, yes, of yes, Selleck. Yes, yes. And I am into that. Well. Should you decide. To grow a mustache? To do a Selleck. Because it's a very, mustache. it's very well, mustache, and then it's like a black, like kind of perm. Mm, is it perm? Yes, it is definitely a perm. He had uh, like go back and look at old school time. Oh, like it was definitely I a perm. Because okay. I had it I on will. that uh, on that uh, that trip we went on a few years ago. All right, then never mind. Yeah, and you hated it. Remember? Yeah, never mind. Maybe a three dog night. Do a. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Go down with it. Yeah, I'm into that. Like a I, look, biker. I love a mustache, but I I promised you after this trip, I said, look. I will not do any more hair bets or things. I realize uh, it is not that much fun for you. It is really hilarious to me and everyone else, but, really but not hilarious. that much fun to you. So I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, You're just testing the limits of attraction. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and I was talking about it with a girl on the cruise where I was just like, you know, I try really hard to be like attractive to you yes do you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. i i have like the things that i know that yeah. you like and i try to stay in shape you know but those pizzas those late night pizzas brother yeah call my name sometimes but you know i try and keep it a, a <laughs> little bit under wraps but you you know sometimes it just doesn't seem like you care if well, I'm attracted to you. Now, that hair, that summer of Swayze hair was a tough one for me. I Even the perm wasn't that bad, but the summer of Swayze was really tough. I have met, to, I, to here's like. the, I've met the past people you've dated, right? Right. For the fortune of that. Right. A few of them. Mm -hmm. It does not seem like you ever cared, and that's why I didn't know. I was like, oh, she, she just doesn't care. I don't care, but I want you to care. I do care. You know what I mean? Yes, I do care, and I care about you. But I'm also like, you know, it's it's whatever. It's okay. a face. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's usually for the show or whatever it is, sure. whatever we're doing. Sure. Um, but that whole thing was a blast. We stopped in Mexico, and uh, man, it, things change a lot. Last time Since I was in you were in college, yeah. Well, last time you I was in Cozumel, right? Because I'd been I've been to Cozumel itself, like three or four times right um even after college i went uh as well and uh what changed it, there there used to be all those beaches used to be private right mm. so you could drive down to the oh, island okay. and go to yeah, these yeah, like yeah. But private white people ruin everything yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. private so beach bars and, like... and everything else and you were like all right cool I, I don't know if it's white people or who owns those things now but like you know, there's 30 floats in the ocean. There's 50 fucking White jet people. skis. And you think the Mex you think I Mexicans are no idea. fucking Jesse want that? Jesse, they want the money. You can't say that anymore on podcasts. You heard what happened this weekend. They want the money. I'm not going. I'm not going to be. Oh, on we'll SNL. talk about that. We'll talk about that. I already wrote them a letter telling them not to contact me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so th th that was my only thing where I was like, ah, shit. It's all stuff and, you know, 
there was no seclusion anymore. It was like, man, I'm going to drive down to the end of this thing and just go and sit on a beach alone. It's like, no, there was oh, 50 no. people selling you no, shark no, tooth no, no, necklaces no. Yep. and trinkets on places that used to be private where I was just like, fuck, man. Um, there still are the know. private, the pay beaches. Uh, no, but you but used to be able to far. drive and it was yeah, like, yeah, man, yeah. you knew because you knew. You know, it was like, man, I know this and this and this, like, and then, uh, no, no, mm-hmm. it's, it's white people ruining everything. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. uh, speaking of ruining stuff though, uh, we had a little adventure getting off the cruise. What? Usually those, we have, you have hard times out when you go on these cruises, right? Uh-huh. You got to get out of there at a certain time. Right. Um, two people, two people were. Called out over the intercom over and over and over yeah, again. Yeah, and we thought they were just sleeping in their room. This is Donkey. Yeah. Uh, Timothy, Your voice. T- Timothy Person. From was his above. Name? Tim- Timothy, Keith Brown and Timothy Pearson. Pearson, yes. Yes. Keith reason- Brown, Timothy Pearson. They keep saying, they're holding us up, guys. These two people in this 3,000 person ship. Yeah. Two are, people are, holding, are holding you up. holding us up. And I was like, man. For two hours. It, it turns out they had warrants. Warrants. Um, we found out later. And their we, friends were hiding trying them. Trying to hide them on the boat. And I didn't know that it would, that like a cruise would trigger a warrant. I really didn't. Well, I mean, according to everyone they were with, it's like, yeah, when you come back into a port of entry, like that's when it triggers. Leaving, they don't give a shit. That's, they should have stayed in Mexico, to be to honest. Me. Yes, because if you know you have a, like a warrant, shit, man. Go take a dope ass cruise and then just stay in Mexico. I met a white dude named Daniel who right. sold me a necklace down there and I ended up chatting with him for about yeah. 20 minutes just he rapping just stayed, about life. dude, and you know he had warrants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Little had some shit going David. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, he had, had some... a lot of shit going on, that guy. And he found a great life. It's perfect. For himself. And you know, Timothy Pearson and uh, Keith Brown should have as well. I know. And I'm also surprised because you doc, right? Mm-hmm. Why don't you jump off the back? Uh, like three when cruises. they're calling your yeah. name. We were in Galveston. The water was warm. you still need to get into the port. Yeah. Ah, you could have swam down at the dock a little bit. Because I, I looked when we were getting off and I was like, Man, why don't you just jump off the back of this fucking thing? Who's going to know? Oof. Who's going to know? Well, that would have been a fun adventure. I guess so, yeah. But you would eventually need to get back to land. Yeah, but it, if you, I, so I was looking, if you just sort of swam down to the end of the dock, granted it would have been about a two, 300 yard swim, right? You could have made it. Right. I felt like you could have made it, uh, but you would have been fine. So I was, I was surprised by that, but I like how they let you just go and party for the week. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, oh, hey, those warrants? Yeah, we'll, get, we'll pick you up when you get back. Well, it doesn't get triggered until you're trying to come back in. Somebody else told me that uh, they do these so, like certain sting operations at the Super Bowl and things like that for free tickets. And they really? Were like, yeah, and they were like, what if they just decided to do that Someone to them? And that. I was yeah, like, man, yeah, yeah. it'd be fucked up if you just let like two killers loose on the cruise and that's what our I'm life sure was. they wouldn't do that, but yeah. But uh, yeah. Anyways, they get arrested um, and, uh, and that was that. And then they taken off. And they yeah, and then the everyone, yeah. Um, but it was, yeah, a really, really great time. Um, Man, performing on a cruise was crazy too. I was just like, shit, just drink whatever you want, you know? Mm. Um, you do get that life, bill. You do get that bill at the end. Big bill. Big bill at the end for booze at the end of those things. But uh, I can say this in all honesty because I, I, I've never performed on a cruise before. Um, I don't know how you could do it for like six months. Because there was a oh god, there was a, a you know there was a, a play going on in one room at night. There was a stand-up comedian in one room and, and, and one night or whatever. And you have to sign these contracts that are pretty extensive. And whew, I, imagine doing that for oh yeah Mm-mm. six months. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That'd be intense, wouldn't it? Yeah, really, really intense. The way we did it was like, or the way that I felt like we did it was, we just kind of hung out with a big group. And we did shows yeah. every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we were just kind of hanging out. Yeah, it was great. It, it was really great. But man, if you had to perform every night on the cruise like that, like those guys, um, that like the dancers and all that other shit, like holy shit, man. But we're already planning the next one. Yes. And uh, we're that's how, getting that's dates. That's how well it went. Yeah, so yeah. We're getting we're dates, getting dates from and Parker, all that other stuff. Yeah. And um, it will be uh, a little bit 
better organized this time. But I think, but everyone that was there, you were on the very first one. I think the idea is to do it every year. So you guys were the guinea pigs, if you will. And I think we so, had well, so we. the best time because I think that's going to be the smallest group that we'll ever have yeah, yeah, that yeah. we were able to talk to. I feel like I hung out with everyone at everyone, some point. If and I everybody didn't, got crazy. I'm sorry, but yeah. And again, people got oh. crazy. It was great. Awesome. It was, it, yeah. Jared was exactly who you, you wanted him to be. Yep. Yep. It was, a, he was exactly who he needed to be. Yeah. He really kept the party going and he made other people feel better about themselves because he was such a shit show, which I love. Oh yeah. It's Do great. you know what I mean? It's great. On brand. You know I love when someone stays on brand. Now we're back in the real world, James. Back mm -hmm. in the real world. Back in a, in a new studio. I can't believe we're saying we're in another new studio three months later, I four know. months later. I know, but, you know, had to happen. Yes, uh, we're, we're growing. We've got, uh, you know, obviously we started this media company. we got somebody to come in and test out some shows with the Jablers. Oh, yes. Um excited for that yeah same here because i've always uh i always thought you and another girl would also be a great pairing as well yeah um again that takes nothing away from this show whatsoever just adding more shows yeah um potentially because so. i did meet a lot of girls actually came on the cruise which was cool yeah um either wives or girlfriends or i mean i would hope next year we would there would be like groups of girl friends that would come too mm -hmm. um but there was way more girls than i thought there would be and they were all awesome and like listen to the show and stuff. So I feel like there are people out there that want to hear. Oh more, yeah. Things that are more geared towards. Well, you look, girls. drinking bros is 94% dudes. Yeah. So, so, uh, but this one, there is are about some badass 60, bitches 40. that come, exactly. you know, and party and partied harder than even the guys and they can fucking handle. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I want to dig into this. It is, look, we got flooded here with this SNL story. Um, right when we got off the books. We didn't have a lot of shit. You're laughing already, Jabes. Because, Why is that? Because of what it is. Why is that? It is real shocking that you are laughing right now. I'm sorry. And, uh, you know. Why? Why is it shocking I that I'm laughing? Don't why, don't, I can't, why don't you say it and I then can't we can put my finger uh -huh, on it. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, SNL announced that uh, they were well. They were adding a few cast members. Sure. So they added what three? Three. Um, now they only have two. Uh, less than, gosh, twelve hours later, they fired fired someone. So who were the people that they first? <laughs> Oh, all right. So if you if you have not heard this story, uh, let me I'll, I'll run you through how SNL works uh, right around this time every year, usually the first uh, end of August, first week of September. Uh, they'll go out and they'll, that's when they look for new cast members. The audition they bring you in. Right. Um, and it's it's very fast. You get hired and you are on. You have two weeks to move your shit. And that is it. Right. Right. Um, that being said. They usually announce it the first week of uh, September, uh, which is happening now. Is they, they're getting ready to gear up here for, their, for another season here towards the end of the month. Um, there was a, a guy named Shane Gillis, comedian, mm -hmm. who was hired and, uh, and then immediately fired yes. from SNL for racist remarks. Um, he was making fun of Asians. Yes. Turning L's into R's. Um, about three hours after he was hired that this story broke, um, some reporter dug through his podcast and, or 80 other fucking pieces of media that this 800 pieces of media, this guy has done and found out that he was making fun of Chinese people, which Jesse does almost Daily. every single And show. I also thought that we all agreed that that was okay. Yeah, yeah. In my mind, that's how I feel. Um, they did not. <laughs> sure, 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 not. sure, sure. So they let him go and said, hey, we are out of here. We were unaware that you had made these racist, misogynistic, mis misogynistic comments and uh, said some other things about fucking Chinatown in L.A. And, and, and it's about... Yeah. 
Uh, some comics being gayer than ISIS and just some, you know, he was... Uh, he dropped the word faggot once and they were yeah. not happy about that as well. Yeah. Um, look, uh, I, this is, we, we're, we are at it. We are at the death of comedy right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a... I had a bunch of messages. I mean, I get flooded with this uh, for this one. Um, because everybody was like, hey, man, not only does Jesse do this literally every show, um, make fun of Asians in some facet or another, mm-hmm. uh, which, look, we make fun of every race equally mm-hmm. on the show, including white people. Right. Uh, we do that a lot, actually. But mostly Asians. Um, and white people. Um, but uh, blacks, you, you name it. We're, we are comedians. I Asian people, yeah. yeah. We are comedians. I, I, I don't give a shit. It is all in comedy. Um, there is not, most of these statements are not made in racist form where it's like, you're a fucking racist. But now, now that's what you're labeled as today, uh, as was this guy, this, this comedian, Shane Gillis. Um, to me, because I, I wrote on Twitter to him when we got off the boat, mm-hmm. um, when I was flooded with this, and I was like, you know, fuck these people, dude. Like, uh, and I know Co- uh, Joey Coco Diaz did as well. Mm-hmm. Just like, you're, look, trust me, you're better off without them. Absolutely. Um, because if you're going, and they hired an, they, they hired an Asian guy on there, mm-hmm. um, on the show, he was one of the three people, and then, then uh, some chick, right? Right. Um, which is the first Asian hire they've ever had in 40 fucking years or whatever. So right. now they're deciding to get gung-ho Asian about things mm-hmm. and people and all the shit. Why don't we go through um, some sketches that SNL has done? Because I guarantee mm-hmm. that they have done some kind of Asian joke uh, somewhere. Uh, someone doing a voice. Yeah. Someone doing... D- dig through all of all of that history of mm-hmm. forty years worth of sketches, but not only that, SNL used to be super edgy mm-hmm. when it first started. It was unbelievably edgy. You had the uh, the the Richard Pryor sketch, which is infamous, um, with uh, Chevy Chase, mm-hmm. where they were going back and forth calling each other racist names. Yes, and then it pushed to. Yes, uh, I think it was Chevy Chase who said the N word with a hard R in that. You know. Hard R. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Richard Pryor responded, honky. And then after the, the other one, he was like, dead honky. You know? Right, right. That was their first year on air. Um, that sketch lives in infamy. They were pushing boundaries like that all of the time. Right. Uh, John Belushi played a samurai. Asian. Asian. And I think like, did like, oh, oh the whole time. The whole thing. Yep. The whole thing. The entire time. Um, Gumby so, was black with Eddie Murphy. Like, I mean, there is years of this, dude. There is, they, Jimmy Fallon was in blackface as Chris, Chris Rock on oh, an right, episode. Right, right, And it's hilarious. Like, if we're doing this now with comedy and you're doing this to your show, is it a comedy show anymore? Because no. apparently, and this is NBC, NBC has no problem with making fun of um, fucking Trump or anyone else, Will and Grace are on NBC. Right. They have not been suspended or fired for their remarks of, we want to out everybody in Hollywood and have them blacklisted for being donors. Like, um, if, if you are a comedy show, where do, you, where do you go from here and what can you say anymore? Right. Uh, and, and the answer is, it can't be on television. It, it cannot be on a major network anymore. If you were looking for real comedy, Right. Uh, if you want the clean shit from the 1950s, that is what network television is now for. That is what SNL is now for. If you were looking for edgy content, you've got to go to Chappelle. You've got to go to podcasts. You've got to go to. You've got to go to people that don't answer to anyone. So. Anyone. And, and everybody uh, in these messages that I got just said, this is the reason why I love you guys. Because we uh, look to Shane Gillis out there because uh, a bunch of people were like, have him on the show. Um, I guess he went to West Point. We Mm. would be honored to have you on the show. It'd be a blast. Um, But to everybody out there, we will not discontinue to do this type of comedy or this other shit because of what might happen in the future or somebody might pick up this and say Mm. it's later and you're a racist or you're a horrible person. 
So we're we, in. We're we all in. We dug our our grave, so to speak. I don't know. Yeah, for 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 NBC or SNL or any anything mainstream or anyone hiring us. Yes. For anything, I think we've definitely that ship has sailed. But we are able to uh, be a, a different type of voice because we're not answering to anyone. Correct. So no one can fire us for saying certain things. Therefore, you will get exactly what we think, good or bad. And same with this guy. I will say I agree with him. So Gillis um, released a statement Thursday that said, I'm a comedian who pushes boundaries. Mm -hmm. I sometimes miss. If you go through my 10 years of comedy, most of it bad, you're going to find a lot of bad misses. I'm happy to apologize to anyone who's actually offended mm -hmm. by anything I've said. My intention is never to hurt anyone, but I'm trying to be the best comedian I can be, and sometimes that requires risks. So in that, I love the idea of who is actually offended. So I would love to, he would love to apologize to any Asian person, anyone that, you know, any gay person, anyone who is actually affected and offended, not offended police, mm -hmm. the actual people. I like that part of it, right? And then the other part is like, I'm a comedian and he is better off. If this is the kind of stuff he wants to do, SNL is not the place for him. I don't know where they found him or what he can do that they thought would be good for the show. So uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that up um, because he is a, an up and coming comedian, but he is a very edgy comedian. He it was already, seems like that. He was already banned. So where did you? In three clubs in Philadelphia, right? For misogynistic or homophobic comics on 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 stage edgy on pushing stage. boundaries yes. a certain type of comedian you had to have known that going in right yeah um so uh, i don't know how you missed the memo on that from philadelphia to new york because that's a quick jaunt it's a two hour it's almost like two they hour were making jaunt a point an I, example um either way then he put out a statement after that once once he got fired uh, which was very shortly after that that just said Look, I appreciate the opportunity from SNL. I didn't want to be a distraction, which I would have been. Um, who, who really cares? I've always been a mad TV guy anyways. It was pretty funny. Beautiful. Um, and then Rob Schneider today uh, came out and uh, is getting murdered for his statements about it because uh, he s supported it. Right. And um, he just said, look, man, uh, at Shane Gillis, as a former SNL cast member, I'm sorry that you had the misfortune of being a cast member during this era of culture of unforgiveness where comedic misfires are subject to intolerable inquisition to those who never risk bombing on stage themselves. Um, could not be said any better. Mm -hmm. We do, I'm, I'm close to a thousand shows between this show and Drinking Bros and God knows how many other podcasts I've been on or done interviews on. You talk for that long or you do comedy for that long, yes, you're going to miss. You're going to miss a lot. Um, there's nothing you can do about that. But what's the alternative? That you don't try, that you don't have an original voice? Mm. Then what? Then what are, we, what are we left with in society or, or uh, other people's voices? I mean, if it weren't for podcasts right now, because I fucking hate SNL. Mm. Um, and I was the biggest staunch supporter of SNL ever. It was my favorite show as a kid. I grew up with it. I dreamed of being on it. I auditioned fucking eight times for that goddamn thing, right? I was still in the camp that it might get better. I thought it got real, really shitty about once Lonely Island left, once uh, Sandberg mm -hmm. and those guys left, right? I thought it got really, really shitty, but I was still in the camp of it's SNL. The brand will come back. They will find some people that will be edgy and cool that, mm -hmm. uh, that I will enjoy. I, I, it, no, that is done. That is dead now. Um, I am also thankful for that because there is a lot of original voices out there now in comedy that I had never heard of before that I'm hearing because they couldn't get on SNL and they started doing podcasts and things like that. Fucking Theo Vaughn. Right. Um, Brian Callen got fucked for... Brian Callen's one of the funniest dudes on the planet, man. Not even in real life, but on Fighter and the Kid. Mm -hmm. I've known him... Fuck, man, it's for... He was one of my, the first people I met probably in 2002. Right. Um, and uh, he's always been funny. 
He's always been great. Didn't know until he had a podcast. Uh, fucking Joey Diaz. No idea until he did a podcast. Rogan. No idea until he did his own mm. podcast where it was like, I thought he was the guy from Fear Factor. Like right. Burt Kreischer. There's a, there's a million voices out there that it's like, man, if it weren't for SNL and all these other networks not doing edgy material, not doing comedy anymore, just not doing straight fucking comedy anymore, I actually wouldn't know about these other people. Right. So maybe they would have gotten stuck. Maybe you throw a Theo Vaughn on an SNL. Yeah. Maybe that fucks his career. For real. Maybe throw Bird on SNL. Maybe it fucks his career. I don't know. Right. Um, but uh, I know with this guy, if he's as edgy as this, I think he'll be fine. I think he'll be fine in the end. But that sucks, man, because it's your dream. And it is really, really goddamn hard to get on SNL. I just don't think he should have been hired, to be completely honest. Like, he's just not... He's a different type of comedian. So I don't like the hiring and the firing, but I don't think he should have been hired in the first place. And that's my opinion. So the funny thing about that is this. There was a hashtag going around and it didn't last very long, but they were like, all right, well, how about we just release the, 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 the audition tape? Right. It's out there. SNL has it. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it was. Yeah. Let's see how edgy the tape was. And then go back and see, all right, great. Because maybe his, and, and it's usually four, you have to do four celebrity impressions or, and, and four original characters. I think they might have trimmed it down to three and three now in the last year mm -hmm. or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but they're all taped and they have it. So how crazy was his audition then? I'd love to see that. Because right. if that was fucking crazy, you should have known. You should have you known what you got from that. Right. Um, but yeah, so uh, it, it sucks, man. And I sent out a tweet. Two after I I'd read up on this and everybody hit me up. And, and I just said, look, man, Keenan Thompson has been on there for 16 years doing the, the same accents for every single character for 16 years. Mm -hmm. So sorry you did one in a podcast that was different um, and people were offended by it and, uh, and you got fired. But what a crock of shit. And then Sandra Oh came out and made a comment today as well and was like, I'm glad we're not tolerating this racism and... The, you know again i'll take it from her i like, guess she is asian but i'm not going to take it from some fucking M my thing is offended this man. police that's but like hey i've been doing comedy since stand up since i was 15 or 16 um you know i quit once i started doing movies and shit but like uh it, it has never left i've never not done comedy for 20 whatever years at this point and um I mean, I've heard a million black comics say white jokes and, you know, fuck, we had Steve Byrne on and saying white jokes and they don't care. Real, real comedians don't fucking care. They don't care. Mm. Um, and I think this probably would have blown over. This is a, the same overreaction. I saw the trailer for Roseanne last night, which they, they picked up again. Bombed without her. And it was almost like to say, hey, we're... We're doing We're fine. Doing fine. We're, we made the right decision. You're not. Your ratings are shit. Yeah. And they're bringing that back. But it was the same knee-jerk reaction with her comments as well, where it's like, hey, man, let's take a step back. Maybe have a, a cooling off period here of 72 hours uh, or a week and go over these comments and then really d decide how fucking outraged we are before we cost people their jobs. Um, Anyways, my two cents on it, and uh, I appreciate everybody sending everything in. No, this show will not change. Uh, matter of fact, we're about to do sponsors right now, and I'm sh I'm sure James will go even harder on uh, you like it today. But uh, man, that sucks for him. Um, first and foremost, we got GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. GhostBed.com was the only thing anybody complained about on the cruise. They didn't they couldn't take their ghost bed with them. It's the only thing. Couldn't take their mattress with them on the cruise. Um, pillows, sheets, adjustable bases. If you're a military or first responder, 15% off forever at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Best in the biz. Um, I love them, man. Uh, $200 off, uh, what is it, the, the Ghost Lux mattress too? They yeah. still got that bundle package too on there um, for $7.99 for all that shit. Uh, you have free pillows. Um, if you're a regular human like myself, 36 month, no interest, pay as you go program. No one is doing that except for ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Get it now. Get it now. Uh, next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. 
Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. Um, Strike Force was on the cruise everywhere. Everybody I, is, Yeah. Everybody's drinking this shit now. Everyone had it in their pocket. This, I saw. I get it. I saw I this it, little though. number happening. Mm-hmm. So they put the package into the drink, like open the corner of it, mm-hmm. put it upside down in the drink and kind of drink it with the package releasing like as ah, you're drinking it. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of just like in there. Sure. Almost like when they do the Corona bottle in the uh, margarita, margarita, you know yeah. that shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I really liked that little number. Ah. I really liked that little fun thing. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. Really nice. Looks like it was like vodka and soda and then the thing was in the side almost like a, you could like stir it with the thing. It was, look, it was sweet. Look at that. I Either way. smart. No carbs, no sugars. Uh, tasty, tiny little tin pouch. You just squeeze it open, and pour it into anything you got. Uh, it'll it's last longer than five hour energy. That's why everybody was drinking it, man. Everybody was going so hard. It, people wanted to stay up. Um, and I, dude, I completely understand it. I drank. Sh- I drink, we look. We drink shit of this all the time, man. Right. Drinking it for years at this point. Um, go to strikeforceenergy.com today. Uh, sign up. They get a subscription of the month, 10 pack, 40 pack, and a 750 milliliter bottle. I know they got new bottles, and they just, Sean Matson just sent them to my house. So I think they'll, they'll be on set the next uh, show. Uh, once we kind of get everything up and running, we just moved into the new building. Last but not least, we got straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you right? There it is. Sorry, SNL. She's fired. Again, I've already sent them a letter. She's fired. You can't. I do told them, do that not anymore. reach out to me. Can't do that anymore, Jabes. Sorry. Sorry, Jabes. Can't do that anymore. You are canceled. So go to straightrazors.com uh, to not be canceled. Mm. You know, shave up. Shave up that gooch. Put a little gooch shave on there. It's uh, straightrazors.com. They got uh, everything you need to be a real man in this life, a real hombre. Uh, straightrazors.com is, uh, is doing it right, doing it tight all night. Promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Jobless. Well, jobless. Um, I, want to, uh, I want to chat about uh, the rest of NBC, what they're doing today. Um, because I... Literally said this uh, two weeks ago on the show. That here's what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I had mentioned a couple of friends of mine who run some big TV series in the past, and I said, "How did you? How would you feel if they got rebooted?" Right. Both of them immediately said, "Yes, yep, yep. I am there for we it. We would I do am, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. uh, you're, you're not going to turn down that kind of money um, at all. I think we learned what not to do with the 90201. Yes. Uh, that is that show, by Don't the way. Don't go meta. No. Don't um, go meta. Just go straight reboot. Yes. You, you got to do that. Uh, by the way, the, the ratings on that thing falling was the, it fell faster than any other summer show that the, the network has ever had. Again, I told you so, whatever. Ross is great. Sure, Bat sure, on the back. sure. Pat on the B for that one. The next up for NBC, because now everybody's apping it up now. Got to have an app now. Sure. Which I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I'm done with. I think I'm done with uh, apps now. I'll get the Disney one, and that is it. I'm gonna keep three. Which one? Disney, Netflix, and uh, and, oh, maybe, okay. and maybe HBO, and that's it. I'm still. Nope. I'm still going not, for the other ones. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna use those at all. Okay. Um, and then well, the new I'll ones. Here, here are the new Showtime. ones. Showtime. Okay. Yep. Showtime. You can watch your bullshit on your own. You know. I usually watch my bullshit on my own. I know. I know you do. Uh, NBC is now is going to have an app that you pay for. Mm-hmm. Why? Can't really figure that out. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to make original program, they said. But isn't that what NBC is actually for? Uh, same with CBS. CBS is doing that as well. Mm-hmm. ESPN Plus is, is doing that. But at least they're in the fight world. So like you can watch live, live UFC. They bought UFC. Mm-hmm. So that you can watch live fights on there and it acts as like a pay-per-view right. type of thing. And that's, you know, five bucks a month. Um, but this NBC thing, man, uh, they wanted the, the, the real reason was they wanted the office back. So 
you know, NBC Universal owns The Office. Mm -hmm. It is the most watched, that and Seinfeld and Friends are the most watched sitcoms um, across the board and like all over the world, I guess, right? And so those rights were worth a lot, a lot of money. And Friends is leaving uh, Netflix this year. Um, they did buy Seinfeld. Netflix did buy Seinfeld two days ago. Really? Mm -hmm. So they're, they're going to have all of Seinfeld. NBC is going to have all of The Office. So I guess if you want to watch The Office, you have to buy this app, and then they're going to do original programming with it. Two of the original programs that were announced today were the remake of Saved by the Bell. If you hear a long silence mm. on the other end for the audio show, just let that sink in. Saved by the Bell. Mm. Not that they all don't look great, because they actually do. Yeah. Uh, Kelly Kapowski, still doing it. Uh, Zach Morris, still doing it. Still doing it. AC Slater looks like he never left the show. Oh, he's the um, exact same. Uh, the Diamond Kid. Prime time. I don't know what Screech they're going to do with Screech. Or I, Lisa. I don't know what they're going to do with her either. Right. Now that she looks like Sammy Sosa. Yes. Because she bleached her skin. Not really sure what they're going to do with, with the two of those. However, uh, I do know that they're doing a reboot where they play parents of kids, I guess. And then they're going to be saved by the bell or whatever, right? I don't know. I, I, I didn't even want to read the rest of the article. Right. But I had to. Because uh, uh, a name popped out at me that was um, pretty shocking. I haven't heard in a very long time. Mm. Since I was a child, maybe five or six years old. Mm. Punky Brewster. Oh, yes. So they're bringing back Punky Brewster as well. And again, Soleil Moonfry. I want to give her a shout out because she's still got it as well. And good for her. Yep. Um, and then she's, she's going to get that money. And I don't blame her, but... She had some big naturals. Uh, huge. Ended up having some big naturals. Huge. 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 Um, and uh, they're going to bring that back as well. Cool. So the rest of them can't be that far behind. I'm, I'm really starting to think one of the two of my friends, it is absolutely going to happen in the next two years. I won't say who it is, mm -hmm. but after it happens, we'll have them on the show. Okay. Um, and uh, you know them. You know both of them. Okay. Uh, one is getting remade. I, actually, one of their shows is getting remade now. Um, I can say what that is. It's Buffy the... Because there's a lot of... That's a big cast. Um, okay. Buffy. Okay. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're doing it all new and like a black girl is going to play Buffy and it's a whole thing. But they're oh, not yeah, having yeah, any yeah, yeah, yeah. older people back. But like... Right. I actually knew like four or five people from that show, but mm -hmm. a good buddy of mine is on, was, was on that too. And I was just like, Hey man, are you, do you get the thing? And he was like, eh, was more on the other one, whatever. Right. right? But they might bring back the other one too after en enough time. Um, but get ready for the, the, the flood gates to open. So if NBC is in this game, CBS is now in this game. Cause CBS has got like the, the twilight zone, I guess with, um, Jordan Peele. Mm -hmm. We never ended up watching it. I didn't feel like buying that app no, for the Twilight no, no, Zone. No. Uh, one of my buddies uh, who's been on this show, Michael Raymond James, he was on a show on there as well that was exclusive to them. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it was a great show. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, I didn't see it because I don't have the app, obviously. But I, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to buy fifty fucking apps. Like that's that's ridiculous. Yeah. So I'm not going to. And uh, if you hit me up and ask me what I think of the Saved by the Bell show or Punky Brewster or anything else, I will not have an answer for you because I'm definitely not buying 6,000 apps when you could have just put it on your regular goddamn channel. Right. Uh, so what, now what are you going to do? Throw the Connors on NBC? Like, the fuck is that? Yeah. Bro? Um, you could have just thrown all this shit on your networks. I don't understand. And if, you wanted, if you wanted The Office back so badly, one, uh, Ed Helms is another show that they're going to do with, and it's the same writers from The Office, and now it's... Ed Helms is going to have a show on this NBC thing too. And it's just like, hey man, if you wanted The Office on, just play it on Saturdays or whenever your repeats right. are and do it. Like what was the thing? Oh, that's right. You wanted to sell syndication rights and get all mm. that money. Great. Um, so with all of this other shit, no. Just, just a big fat no. Mm. So you don't have to write in and ask me if I saw any of it because uh, I am not going to do that. Does, does one of those shows mean that much to you that you watch it over and over again? Which? 
Uh, like The Office or Friends or... No, I mean, The Office I can throw on, Parks and Rec I can throw on at any moment. Mm -hmm. um, but no, 30 Rock is actually the one that I would throw on more So all of those will be on that as well? The other. That, those will be on those as well? But I don't need to or, or seek, seek to. Mm. If it's like you see it on there, you're like, okay. Yeah. But I never like go search for. Sure. Yeah, I, I... I think there's enough, for me right now, there's enough really good original programming, programming yeah. between Showtime, HBO, and Netflix mm -hmm. for me personally that I have never had to watch A, a reboot, or B, go back to The Office or Friends because for me, I think that there's awesome original programming. Yes. There's always something for me to watch on either Showtime, HBO, or Netflix, which are the best ones doing it right now. Yes. Um, so. And then uh, Apple, I'm sorry, just released their app as well, and that's $4.99, so they're having original programming. We'll see how that fucking, <sighs> uh, the Reese and, and uh, they, Jennifer Aniston thing is, because I could be persuaded. Two seasons, they bought it for. I so could you be will persuaded. Be, you will be guaranteed two seasons of that show. It's about, like, it's about a morning show. Right. Um, I could, again, I will have to see what it, how it is. It looks amazing. And they're getting a million an episode. Two seasons, so. Look, you got to come out of the gate strong, and I get it, but trying to find that much original programming. Good luck, sweet Charlotte. Um, but yeah, I, the, the only the, the only reason I'm getting the Disney one is for the kids, right? Um, but the the other the other shit I'm I'm all I'm, I'm I'm fine with, just not having that around. And I was never a big like rerun guy. Like my I would say my favorite drama of all time is uh, Breaking Bad, right? Yeah, love Breaking Bad. Yeah, couldn't wait to watch it every single week. I have never gone back to rewatch that show. Yeah, me neither. A lot of people do. Yeah, and look, I not that there's not, anything wrong with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have not. Um, but again, there is enough things. Yeah. For me to watch that. Okay, maybe they're not as amazing as Breaking Bad, which I think from top to bottom, just beautifully, everything was done amazing on that show. Right. Yeah. It was just this perfect thing. Um, are the things that I'm watching like that amazing? No, but I'm willing to like move the needle forward from that. Right, and give things a chance how do you feel about the movie coming out the breaking bad movie mm -hmm. i saw the one minute teaser they dropped for it with I with jesse leave things i leave things where they i'll watch it sure and i'm excited for it because mm -hmm. that's how much i loved the show yeah 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 um but uh man after they did it with deadwood when i was just like i love deadwood i do i would have liked to just see them have one more literally just one more episode to wrap up that storyline and see what happened to them you probably would have been fine. The movie was, the movie was decent enough, but like I was, you know, I was done. Yeah. I, I, like I don't know how many years Breaking Bad's been off the air. It feels like maybe four. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. I'll, I'll definitely watch it. But uh, right. I was never a big rerun guy. I loved Seinfeld when it was on. Um, I, I, you know, I don't think I missed it on, on a, you know, when it came on live mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I liked Friends when it was on. I, li I like I like those shows. Uh, I like The Office when it was on, but I don't. I just don't go back and watch reruns. Really, like I don't. I'm with you. There's enough original programming where it's just like. Eh. And I'd rather support people doing new shit, right? Than continue to watch the old stuff. Yeah, uh, and not that they're not great. I just look. I've already seen it. I've already seen it. Um, I wanted to ask you about the Bourdain thing today. Anthony okay. Bourdain, your boy. Mm. Um, he had, they're having an auction for like a bunch of his right. personal stuff. And, um, and they're, they're thinking the auction is going to bring in four to $600,000. Mm -hmm. 40% of it is going to uh, the culinary a, school that he yeah, studied scholarship at. scholarship set up in his name at his alma mater, the culinary school, culinary arts what a, institute. I think. Yep. Institute of blah, blah, blah. CIA? You bet. Yeah, yeah. I forget. Anyway. And then 60% is going to the daughter and the... And the mom, which that's the only confusing part for me, where I'm not sure why they need money. That maybe, I guess, he didn't leave them enough, or... 
I don't that. So here's what I thought when I saw they it. They thought it should be 60, 40, but whatever. Look, if you, like, if you have a truss set up, those are pretty hard to, to penetrate. Yeah. Um, even after death, Epstein did it to an nth degree where it was just like, Oh shit. Right. I mean, he did it two days before he fucking hung himself. Um, Epstein that is right. not Bourdain. I no. want to clarify that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, a trust is hard to get through. When I read this, I thought to myself, man, I thought he would have just left everything to the daughter and the ex-wife. And now I might lean the other way where this is really early to be selling shit to me. Yeah. But then we also talk. It's yeah. been a year. It's only been a year, right? That's it, right? 2018. Yeah. yeah. June of 2018. And, and it's and again, and this is the headline on CNN to raise money for his family, which is like, man. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, I didn't really look into that when he died of like where his money was going. Uh, I had just assumed. Uh, that he was I rich. Just, I was assumed that he was rich or that he had money set aside for his family. I, don't, I guess I thought I don't more of him. I don't get it. Um, I be, thought more of him. I thought if he was going to hang himself, he would at least make sure that his daughter was completely set up. But maybe I give him too much credit. I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, it, it was a strange one. But either way, like uh, more than 200 of his personal belongings are going up for sale uh, on an auction next month. Um, I want the record collection in well, the so, Yeah, we'll read it off here. Uh, some of the items are, are some of his paintings. Uh, articles of clothing, which is kind of creepy to me. There's a jacket. There's a bomber jacket, but yeah. that was given to him. I don't know if yeah, he yeah, wore yeah. that like in yeah. real life. Uh, and even a custom made, made Bob Kramer chef's knife mm -hmm. uh, that's worth like six grand. Mm -hmm. um, so the entire thing they said, again, four to six hundred K. Um, and uh Again, did he cook with the were, knife all the time? What did he? No, what's the... no. It was just uh, it was on one of the shows. He had gone somewhere and they visited this guy's shop or whatever, and he made him a knife personal. So you can like go back and watch the show where he like made the knife for him. And you okay. see how he makes it and all of got this. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um. So I don't know if uh, he had so many. I'm sure knives and knives that he used regularly mm -hmm. that he just sharpened and like. Chefs don't usually use like a new knife all the time. So that was more like a Got it. An awesome thing to have. I don't think any of these things he used regular. Okay. You know, they were things that you could go back to like I, I like you can go back to each show and find where each one of these things was featured, right? So like the bomber jacket that he got as a gift, the painting that he visited in the very last episode, he went to this guy's you know, art his house and mm -hmm. looked at all his art or whatever. Uh, I think that's on there. There is a painting that was made for him by Hunter S. Thompson's artist. You know, that guy that makes yeah, yeah, all this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there was one that was made for him uh, that I think is like $19,000 is worth 19000 okay. But anyway, um, they're all things that you can kind of trace back to different shows. Yeah. That he didn't like. They're not things that you never saw him use or you never saw him talk about you know little gifts he got i'm sure so many things oh yeah I'm, I'm sure in his travels i mean every time someone saw them they probably wanted to give him fucking something yeah there was and a, he just a, got gifted all in every episode his basically. personal record collection yeah so um, i wanted the record collection and the knife oh you if did, you were you gonna did. get yeah yeah yeah. if yeah. you were gonna get me anyone no. i would want his record collection and the knife I'm not gonna drop 6k on a just knife just saying um, but yeah, for you sure. know, for sure. Um, it's odd to me, uh, this whole situation with him. Um, yeah, by the way, I... spe speaking of record collections, somebody sent in this uh, a listener of ours. If you're watching the video show on YouTube, sent in a record collection from the Rolling Stones um, to us and said, look, I would prefer not to be named on air. Um, I, I love your show and I listen to it every day. You and Jables. And uh, here is I know. You named your son Jagger and you love the Rolling Stones. Here is Why did he prefer not to be named? He just said, I'm a listener and I'm a diehard listener and I'm not doing this for any, he goes, I do not want any intention for it uh, at all. Just ho I, hopefully you'll enjoy these as much as we did. Mm. You know, it's just like, man, that 
it was awesome, right? Hmm. Um, that record collection that he had. Right. That's something you want too? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's all like... Uh, Things that he listened to. He listened to and the New York like punk scene around his like drug time mm-hmm. was pretty much the be- best. So he's like got a uh, rare like Velvet Underground and the Kinks and like these weird ass records. And I just think it would be, I think it says a lot about somebody and to like yeah. listen to the records that they kept uh, personally. Yeah. I, uh, you know, it's funny, like having, having, you know, family members die, obviously. Right. You hold on to stuff, I feel like, for a certain amount of time, and then you realize it really is all just stuff. Just stuff. And um, I, don't, I don't feel bad about that, like them selling this stuff, you know? Because mm-hmm. obviously they need money. They need, mo- they need money, and he didn't apparently leave them any, I guess. Or yeah, again, I, I don't know. I, I don't what know happened what happened, but, uh, you know, selling the bomber jacket and things like that. Maybe I would have kept the records and the knife, I guess. But um, I think I would have kept the records only because that looks like his personal collection. collection. Yeah. And so as a daughter, like I think that you would be, like if I, I don't know, if I had that of my dad, my dad's still alive. But like mm-hmm. if I have, I should maybe compile this. Of songs that like remind me of him because uh-huh. he would always listen to them, right? right. So, like, if my dad had a record collection that he left, I think that, for me, would be a really... It would, it would be something that would connect you immediately, right? Right. And I'm sure that's how you feel about your dad, right? So, when you hear the Rolling Stones, I think that immediately connects you to him, whether you think about it every time yeah. or not. Yeah, yeah, But you can go back to a time where he was playing it, you guys were barbecuing, whatever, like, he sure. loved them. So that to me was the strange, the only weird piece of th- of memorabilia that they're getting rid of, because I just think, God, the daughter. I think the daughter should have that. Like these are her dad's like favorite fucking bands and records that he bought and loved. Right? Were they close? Do you know? Yes and no. I mean, he traveled two hundred and. 90 days a year yeah out of the year yeah so were they close i'm not sure how close can you be to someone that is only home what math right days out of the year 72 days math out of the year. is also fun yep but nope that is 75 days out of the year. <laughs> so yeah. you know what i mean like how close yeah. can they be and i know that he wrote the last cookbook that he wrote was for her so it was like all these things that they would make together Right. Mm. So that was like the connection they had. He had like a pancake recipe on there, which is so simple, but it would like he would talk about how he would make it with his daughter. Gotcha. Uh, And that was the last cookbook that he did. So, I mean, I think he tried, but there's just no way to be close to someone that's gone that much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially Uh, as a kid. Either way, I was uh, I was surprised when that popped up today. I was like, huh, shit. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to think like like I like the scholarship fund, that's cool. Yeah. But if they're able to get rid of that much, I just wonder what it is all for. Is it just extra for them? Cuz if it's to raise money for them, like let's raise money for them. Maybe it really is just stuff, you know, where where they're just like, "Hey, I don't And there's not a lot. It's not like they're giving getting rid of a bunch of shit. Well, it's 200 th- pieces. Like it's a but whether or not like those are like you know thirty of those are albums, I don't know. Right. I don't. I don't know the the total on there. There's, there's a website you can go to and look it up. Maybe we'll pop on over there and see if there's anything weird that you want. Um, anything from Bourdain. Bourdain. I do. Want. I want anything. Um, from from Bord Bordizzle. Yeah, if we can pick it up for a yeah a, a song. grand a song. <laughs> <laughs> then yeah, um, but yeah. it's auction. So it again, is. all these things are gonna go up depending on how bad somebody wants it. So you yeah, can say you the knife is 16 that's it. or 6,000, right? But if people are bidding, it could go up a lot higher than that. Yeah, I'm sure it's like eBay. It's going to, you know, the things like eBay where you just kind of, mm-hmm. there's the end thing and the seconds tick down and that's it, you know? Mm-hmm. It's essentially what these things are at this point. But uh, I'm trying to think if there's anybody that, I, I, yeah, I mean Mick Jagger, I guess, and, uh, and Keith. But other than that, nah, I don't know. 
you're not connected to, the, to anyone the way that I am with Forte. No, maybe not. <laughs> maybe I, I don't know. Maybe I am. I've got a lot of signed shit from people um, all over. All Like most, all the stuff on the set is pretty yeah. much so. Yeah, that's, yeah, there's, there's a certain part of it. I don't, yeah. Like Val Kilmer's like hat from right. Tombstone would right. be awesome. I didn't realize how connected I, or how, how I felt about Bourdain until he died. Yeah, yeah. And now I kind of, maybe you should pop on over there, see if there's something on there. We there's a the bunch desk. of things I, I want on there. I got you a little there, bus for, for your desk. Yeah, there's a bunch of things I want, but I don't. <laughs> They're really uh, trying to raise some money. I just so. want the answer of who, who got that money, what that trust was looking like after he passed. Um, now it's time to get to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we? We shall. Um, I am going to give this to uh, uh, one of the very first people I met in L.A., and I talked about him earlier. Um, his name is Bert Kreischer. Oh. Uh, Bert is fucking hilarious, man, and always has been. That dude has never literally ever changed. Um, he's been shirtless since the very first day that I met him in Los Angeles, and I think... And continues to be. I want to say that was like 2000, man. I don't know. Continues to be. Um, Shirtless. Yeah. I, I, look, the reason why he, he's revolutionary to me is like... He fucking did it, man. Like, And he continues to do it where... I think he wanted to fit into that mold for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I know he talked about this on a show with... Uh, Maybe it was shot. I think, I think it was Fighter and the Kid. Um, and and they held, Joe Rogan talked him out of it of like, hey man, stop doing the History Channel stuff. Try, you know, the sitcom stuff where you're the fat, yeah, yeah, dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just be. You're not that. Mm -hmm. Be you and mm -hmm. it will be magic one day. And it's, it's really fucking hard when you have a wife and kids and to, to risk like that. To risk everything. Um, his wife was one of my uh, building managers in LA. And uh, he was gone a lot during that time. And um, to see all of everything that's happening and the success because of him turning on a dime, staying true to himself, and then going back and saying, all right, fuck it, I'm going to do this mm. type of comedy. It started with him posting. He was like, all right, I got to get into social media and I got to start posting stuff. He posted this story called The Machine. I, he, if you haven't read his, his uh, biography, it's great read it a few years ago. It's called Life of the Party. It's really funny. Um, if you don't know him uh, uh, before that, he was Van Wilder in real life. Um, Rolling Stone did a huge article on him about a guy staying in college for 10 years. That was him. And they mm -hmm. purchased his life rights. That's how they made that movie was because of mm -hmm. Burt Kreischer. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, the very first clip that he posted when he started to get serious about this stuff and change his career was a story about him called The Machine, um, which is... 85 million views now, I believe, on like YouTube and Facebook and all that stuff. Uh, and it was about him in college and being accosted by the Russian mafia. It's really, really, really fucking funny. After the shitty day of this SNL thing and comedy being ruined, um, uh, uh, the production company bought Legendary, uh, bought the rights for the machine with Burt Kreischer to star in a movie about that. And oh uh, um, that made me really, really fucking happy where I was just like, man, I've known that story for fucking yeah. forever, man. And, uh, and it's never not been hilarious to me. Right. Like it's always really, really funny. And for everything that this dude has gone through um, and now they're going to make a movie about this uh, is phenomenal to me. And, uh, I don't know that I would have made the decision he made with a wife and two children at the time. And now having a wife and two children at this time, like to switch and just go the other route when you don't know if that's going to pay any money whatsoever is uh, incredibly difficult. So. But you have to be yourself. If you're trying to be someone else, I don't think it ever works. Y and you that's are, but just my, my whole thing with podcasts, my whole thing with this is... If you aren't yourself, people can feel it. They know it, and they don't like it. But you, and that's it, just with everyone. It, with anybody out there, with a wife and children, know that you have to pay the bills too. And 
that is a really, really tough decision at that point. You know, it, right. it, look, as a younger guy, you could say to yourself, hey, man, what do I have to lose? I'm fucking sleeping on a single and yeah, you know, yeah, or yeah. a studio or whatever. With this, you have a lot. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's really paying off. And uh, congratulations to all his, all his success because this is crazy, man, that they're going to make this into a movie. It deserves it. Yeah. It's the fucking story is hilarious, obviously. It's so good. Um, and, uh, and it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. It really is li like this in real life. So, fuck. Um, it's awesome. Awesome to see. So, I, I wrote him on Twitter and I just said, hey, bud, uh, finally some good news for comedy today. Congrats. And he hit me back. And yeah, so it was rad. Nice. Um, congrats to, uh, to Bert. Uh, Jesse, welcome back. Thanks, we buddy. Got a, you toughed it out today. Was, yeah, we were well, swaying. Yeah, swaying. I've got to go, but I will be <laughs> back and better than ever tomorrow. Take some Dramamine, James. Uh, for Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I'm Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.